Good, we mostly figured that out. I think at first you were thinking there would be a proton transfer from here to here. Well, I was, I thought we were doing category two. Right, yeah, in category two we might do that. Of course, by the way, now you can, you can kind of see why this is not, it wouldn't make sense for this to be category two. Um, what was the effect of having a water attack? Well, the effect of having the water attack was to ultimately introduce a hydroxy group. And the water attack ultimately that I introduced a hydroxy group. Well, there wouldn't be any point to having a second water attack because that would just replace this hydroxy group with another hydroxy group. So there's no point thinking of this as a category two because we can't get any more hydroxy groups than yeah. we already have. So um, in this case, um, it wouldn't make sense to go on and think of this as a category two. Once we've uh, put in the first hydroxy group, it wouldn't be interesting even if we could have a second hydroxy group add. That would just replace the one we already have. All right, and these are all equilibrium steps. This would be an example of hydration. Notice that even though this came from water, it doesn't look like water anymore because it deprotonated. This we could call a diol because we have two alcohols here. Wouldn't it be a diol because it's on the same carbon? That's good. That's good that you remember that. So technically, when we have two alcohols on the very same carbon, that's called a geminal diol. That is a term that you might see. If you guys know astrology, the Gemini are the twins. Well, these are like twinned alcohols because they're on the same exact carbons. Um, so it's considered a geminal diol when the two functional groups are on the same exact carbon. All right, so what we just went through was acid catalyzed hydration. We just saw the mechanism for an acid catalyzed hydration, uh, category one type reaction. Okay. And why don't I show you the mechanism for a base catalyzed hydration as well? That's also important to know. Can I erase this? You have this in your notes? Yes. All right. I guess you guys figured that anyway. So. Let me remind you of something we talked about last time. Actually, at this point in the course, usually your instructor wouldn't say sulfuric acid. They would usually just say H+. Um, but for us, it's better to actually put it in acid so we have someone to take, to, to take the proton back at the end here. We can use the sulfate. for a base catalyzed hydration. One of the themes we're going to see now in the course is when you use, when you're going to use a base, it's good to use a base that is uh, the conjugate of your solvent, or it's good to use a solvent that's the conjugate of your base. That way you don't need to worry about them competing with each other because they're kind of the same thing. So it probably would not be a great idea maybe to use sodium hydroxide and methanol because then we could get competition between those. But Sodium hydroxide is just a deprotonated water, so these are two versions of the same thing. So this would be a good way to do this. Now, in a sense, maybe we shouldn't think of this as base catalyzed so much as just under basic conditions. Who's going to be the nucleophilic, well, who's the most reactive atom here? Oh. Yeah, we saw last term that we should think of this as an ionic bond. And actually, we can just simply show the hydroxide attacking. The simplest way to show this is just to show the hydroxide attacking. I'm going to keep following my habit from last time of putting an asterisk onto the former carbonyl carbon and the former carbonyl oxygen. We can show the counter ion now stabilizing this negative charge. And now we're almost done. There's just one more thing to have happen. What would be a good logical last step? It will steal a hydrogen from the H2O. Yeah. We know that after the main reaction, we want to get rid of the charge. Well, we can do that by taking a proton from the water. We get the same organic product as before. It doesn't matter whether you use acid or base catalyst. The catalyst doesn't affect the organic product. And you can see that the hydroxide here really did act like a catalyst because we regenerated it in the last step. We really did regenerate the hydroxide in the last step, so it really was acting like a catalyst. This is a little bit tricky because people would expect when they hear base catalyzed that they should start by having the base take a proton. 
So that's something to make a note of. Now, of course, you could do that. You could have this hydroxide take a proton from the water. But all that would do is give you another hydroxide, which is what you started with anyway. So that's just an unnecessary complication. So rather than having the base start by stealing a proton from the water, which would just give us the same hydroxide we started with, we might as well just use this base as a nucleophile, so to speak. We can just use this base to go in and attack. And it is still acting like a catalyst, though, because we saw that we regenerated the hydroxide at the end with our uh, protonation step here when we took the proton from the water. We'll see that in a, in a bunch of reactions throughout the course. A lot of the time when people say things are base catalyzed, it really seems more like the base is just acting like a nucleophile sometimes. So maybe it might be best to say this is under basic conditions. Uh, this is a hydration under basic conditions. All right, so it's important to know both of these mechanisms. And again, the part that gets people confused is they start by looking for somebody for the hydroxide to deprotonate, whereas here we can just have an attack. This is still considered a hydration, even though technically it's not the water that attacked, because hydroxide is so closely related to water. This is still considered a hydration. All right, so now we've seen the acid and base catalyzed hydration. Let, let's review this in the handout for a second. We look at page one of the handout, category one. So we reviewed here how water under acid or base catalyst can uh, go through this reaction. Um, in the handout, I only put down the basic um, approach. In fact, I really only did that for grid yarn, so I didn't put this mechanism in the handout, but we just went through it. And notice here at the bottom, formation of diols is reversible. We were just talking about how this hydration reaction is reversible. So I really, I guess I should have written it like this. All right, so that's another reaction for our toolkit. Last session we saw how to, so, at last session, we saw that basically this whole couple of weeks, we're just focusing on all the different nucleophiles that can attack an aldehyde or a ketone. Last time we talked about Grignards and alcohols, and now we just talked about water. Now the next point is, we should start talking about, we know that all of these work because aldehydes and ketones are electrophilic. But what this question is really asking us is, what types of aldehydes and ketones are the most electrophilic and which are less electrophilic? Those will be the most reactive. That's actually really a separate issue from hydration. So now we have to go through a separate issue, just what makes aldehydes and ketones more or less reactive? Wouldn't aldehydes be more reactive than ketones because there's more of a uh, like polar bond because there's not like two carbons, there's only one hydrogen. There's only like one carbon chain and hydrogen, so there's gonna be like a stronger like bone going towards the oxygen. So you said this was more reactive? Yeah. Does that mean it's more stable or less stable? Less stable. That is correct. And your explanation was on the right track. I don't know if you quite explained why this was less stable. Um, so you're right, in a sense there's more of a dipole moment here. Why, and you're right that the difference is here we have a hydrogen and here we have a carbon. Why, how does this carbon help to stabilize? Because it's the carbon. electron donating, like methyl groups, we saw like the right. previous term, they like, like an electron. Right. Yeah. Good. And why do we need something electron donating to stabilize here? Why would something electron donating because be a stabilizer? That's already partially positive. Perfect. You got it. All right. You really worked that out. That's good. 